We are the mobility group. Uh, we're dealing from China, but from different cities. I'm Yi Peng, currently in Beijing. Uh, my name is Xi Xiao Zhu, and I'm currently in Changzhou. I'm Ye Xu, and I'm in Shanghai. Please enjoy the presentation. We looked at the street condition in some of the most developed cities, and we have a growing concern about the ever increasing demand for transportation efficiency and communal space. New York is an extremely developed city, packed with economic and cultural attractions. Most people here live a fast-paced lifestyle with inevitable increases in stress, intense social pressures, and competitive atmosphere. New Yorkers' stress level is higher than most cities in the world. Subways and commuter trains crushed with passengers at peak periods. Deliveries are delayed by excessively slow-moving traffic in many areas of the city. Storefront vacancy rate is volatile. Business survival rates drop every year. Overloaded walkways are full of jarring noises, yet accessible public space area are hard to find. The city is in need of new approaches on its infrastructure. Entitled Hell and Paradise, contradict mobility and stillness within the street experience. Implementing foreseeable technology and different type of human nature interaction. While exploring new possibility of social occasions and activities, create a paradox in which mobility of efficiency and the stillness of serenity coexist within the street experience. We named the lower part of this project the hell, not to imply suffering and distress, but celebrate speed and efficiency, embrace state-of-the-art technology, and create a controlled environment, optimize precise and efficient riding experience. Relieve stress from a busy New Yorker. Privately owned cars are ruled out in most of the major cities. Only self-driving cars are permitted to enter Manhattan, and driving become more of a hobby. Cars are connected via 5G and dispatched by advanced algorithm. You won't be driving a 5C car with 4C MP stuck in the traffic anymore. For a more coherent experience, outdoor dining and other storefronts are moved to a higher level. Since people won't be driving while riding in a car, the lower level is turned into an information consumption level. Corporations and individuals can rent those screens for advertisement or movie trailers. A mezzanine functions as a service level for self-driving cars to charge and self-diagnose. Passengers are picked up at this level. Residents can take the external elevator to get here. Parcel storage is also located on this level. People can wait for their ride. And pick up their packages, and the arrangement of this place creates opportunity for social interaction. Take an escalator from the mezzanine to the lateral level, where all the stores are relocated. We're using computer-controlled single-track system for the lateral, so it won't be vertically interfere with the park too much. Packages are dropped to the parcel storage by a lateral. A conveyor system is built into the large floor plate between the structures. The upper part is named Paradise. Various public spaces connected by a linear park, designed to be a drastically different experience from the lower part. We want to create a pocket of stillness within an ever-moving city, a restful void within the urban fabric. Here, we are generating an autonomous discrete zone to allow for new event types and spaces, redefining the communal idea of public and private within the urban scape. We want to address different ways human can interact with synthetic nature. There are moments where you can immerse yourself in a forest-like experience. All you see is nature. Places allow you to enjoy a green space while embracing the energy of the vividness of New York City street. Some parts of the park geomorphology are modified into cultural programs, like an outdoor theater. Small interior spaces embedded into the landscape for poor weather or for those who are circumstantially unable to interact with nature directly. Anyone can still enjoy a fixed-scope view from the inside. Co-working spaces are provided to residents. Since we have learned so much about long-distance working during the pandemic, some job positions can be offered remotely. A small exhibition space located in a quiet and discreet corner of the paradise, celebrate art and cultural diversity, will maintain certain level of privacy. The paradise is vertically connected via moments like this cafe. 
function as a conjunction in between programs, perfect place for social interactions, a cup of coffee by yourself in a cozy afternoon. Louis Kahn once said, A street is a room by agreement. Through the eyes of a fictional yet plausible documentary film, we might be able to simulate the perspective of the parties in this contract and inspect the architectural ideas, urban consequences, and social political controversies. To come here was definitely one of the reasons that I wanted to revisit New York. The Central Park, the High Line, the big vast thingy. When you think there's no way you can fit anything else onto Manhattan Island, the city will always surprise you. Last time I was here, I didn't have a pleasant taxi riding experience. We were driving at a speed not much faster than walking, but with the new self-driving cars, it is much better. I ordered a ride on my phone and it was here in two minutes. Kind of worry about all the monopolized data though, but what can you do? There are undeniable consequences for the neighbors due to the presence of this project. We interviewed a local resident and had him share his thoughts with us. When they started then, I did not realize it would become a big tourist attraction. Frankly, I'm anxious about my rent going up. I heard that it will pay for itself in about just five years, like what happened with the High Line, which is crazy. The new street plug-in made my commute more manageable. I got 30 minutes more sleep every day, which is quite lovely. I'm super busy and not really a socially active person. I don't really get to take advantage of having a nice public park at my doorstep. That kind of boosted my already high fear of missing out in this incredible city. It is stressful in a way. Historically, cultural and technological advancements occur in areas with high population density. The authorities had always intended to increase the city's capacity to uplift the neighborhood's motivating energy and cultural diversity. But a dichotomy between efficiency and freedom is unavoidable. This idealistic project celebrates urban density by creating a pocket of stillness within an ever-moving city, a more functional and habitable lifestyle within a certain level of authoritarianism, and a cost of a monopolized data, forming a truly unique metropolis experience for those who seek a journey of excitement.